Hey guys, welcome back. So now getting back into our talks of Dawn of X. And though we're doing a bit of catching up, I'm still glad that we took our time with this one because I feel like I missed a couple things the first time around reading this, especially in the case of Dr. Gregor, with her trying to bring back someone she loves while Mystique is also trying to bring back someone she loves and Charles is trying to protect someone he loves. But with Forge possibly still being in love with Mystique, this could get interesting, so let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch your spills every week and don't forget to hit that bell up top so you can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so jumping right back in, a lot of this is going to revolve around the X-Men's attack on the Orcus Forge, which they executed with the intention of minimizing human casualties, but even with doing so, there was an extreme number of casualties with Dr. Gregor's husband sacrificing himself in order to stop the mutants, which then pushed her dedication meter through the roof. And with doing so, not only did it make her hatred for mutants more fervent, but it also led her to believe that what was left of her husband would continue in her work. And this is what we had seen back in Dawn of X issue 1, where it appeared that she had created some type of pink crystal that looked much like a shard of the Mkron crystal, or perhaps even a Shi'ar memory crystal, much like we had heard Charles mention the Forge when it came to resolving the issue of having enough memory to back up mutants with Cerebro. And at this point, I'm leaning more towards the Shi'ar memory crystal, and I'll tell you guys why in just a moment. But when we had first seen Dr. Gregor with this crystal, while standing with Director Devo, which is also an important but while holding this crystal she tells director devo that she knows how to bring her husband back but as a result of this we had also seen director devo create a device that would house the crystal which is also something that director devo described as a work of art much like the omega sentinel karima which feels like a bit of foreshadowing for the purpose of this actual device but with doing this to hand the device to someone to hand over to dr gregor but not without having a candid conversation of how dr gregor is so emotionally involved with this project and how what she's doing here is very personal to her and when the device gets delivered to her and we see her place it with the other pieces she's been working on which also have the same color glow of that crystal which yet again is most likely a Shi'ar memory crystal it's here where we then see her place them in the body of a torso which for her is part of her progress of not only devotion to the cause of Orcus but also bringing her husband back and for Orcus it doesn't stop here because they have defense systems orbiting around Mercury a watchtower were on Venus and as far as Sentinel City which is where they called for backup when the forge had been attacked by the X-Men Sentinel City at this point continues to expand but now with the addition of bunkers post the attack on Mother Mole which are there most likely as a precaution and a safety measure for Orcus so that in the event that they are caught off guard again or if some disaster takes place in Sentinel City they have somewhere to go but so now in the case of Mystique and for her going back to not long after her Toad and Sabretooth had stolen information which which had made the attack on the mother mold possible. It's here where we go back to that conversation between her and Charles, where she had hesitated to give him the information they had stolen, telling Charles that she wanted something more. With of course Charles knowing what she was referring to, being Irene Adler, also known as Destiny who we had talked about much more in depth during the time of House of X and Powers of Ten, and at that time we had went deeper into Destiny's history and the relationship between Mystique and Destiny over the years. And although Mystique has had her share of lovers and friends before marrying Destiny and even after Destiny's death, but even so, Destiny hands down is the love of Mystique's life. And at this point with Charles bringing everyone back to where in some cases mutants who had been dead for a long time, but for some reason that's not the case for Destiny and Mystique wants her back. But also with Destiny being a precog, we do get a bit of a flashback into a moment to some point in time when Destiny was still alive and she gave Mystique a warning about Charles Xavier and Krakoa as it would be today, which is something that I believe that she is very mindful of because when she gives Charles the information, they discover the mother mold and Charles pretty much tells her, we're sending a team out there, we need you to go with them because number one, this threat is the priority and this is what needs to be handled first which we had seen at the time how that had played out with pretty much everything going downhill for all the X-Men and just about everyone dying on that mission. But also with this, Mystique had made an agreement with Charles that if she were to do this one more thing, then in return she would get Irene back. But even with executing her mission and giving her life to do so, when she returned, Xavier and Magneto had told her that they weren't sure if she completed her mission, which yet again turned into another situation of we need one more thing and after that you'll get what 
what you want. But even with this, I've been thinking like an argument could be made that Xavier and Magneto, and at least Xavier, know very well that Mystique did finish her mission because the whole time that the team was up there, Jean had everyone linked while also communicating with Charles nearly step by step and beat by beat. So it's much more likely that he does know she completed it, but either way he sends her back not only to give her the runaround, but also likely execute another objective. And this is where I believe we really get our hidden gem, pun intended, because when Mystique goes back to see if her flower had been planted and also check the status of Dr. Gregor's work, it's here where we also see that she had overheard the conversation between Karima and the director and she had also got a peek into what Dr. Gregor was doing, which also showed us that Mystique is aware of Dr. Gregor's capabilities of bringing someone back. And even while leaving when Mystique had the opportunity to kill Dr. Gregor, she didn't. And I believe her reason for doing so is because she needs Dr. Gregor to complete her work. And so when she gets back and she shares with Xavier and Magneto what she's found. On the surface, though we see Nimrod is being built much sooner than he should be, but even still there's so much more here that shouldn't be overlooked. Because one, even with doing this and keeping up her part of the bargain, now all of a sudden the terms change and she needs to earn a level of trust to bring Irene back. And she's given complaints like why didn't you kill Dr. Gregor when you had the chance, even though it's their law not to kill humans. So she's clearly being given the runaround. But even in this moment she doesn't argue, she just tells them she'll go back tomorrow and when she does she'll do what needs to be done and with that being said I'm gonna tell you what needs to be done but before that I want to talk about Charles for just a moment because remember between Charles Magneto and Mora they're really the secret leaders of everything going on in Krakoa and as we know like as far as the quiet council they're really just the appearance of leadership and aside from that really just the council that delegates politics with other countries or missions for different teams for import and export but really and truly these these three are the main ones who know about Mora's previous lifetimes and they're setting in place the true decisions and really just holding puppet strings over the quiet council. But in the case of Charles who I do not doubt still has feelings for Mora and because of that he's going to tailor the leadership to protect her at all costs. And even though as far as we know Mora is going in the footsteps of helping mutant kind much like destiny had threatened her to do but even with doing so if you guys remember to send that message destiny had pyro kill Mora slowly. Just just so she would remember that message. And with Mora sharing these memories with Charles, which would practically make him relive this moment with her, you can understand why, even if she didn't ask, like if Mora didn't even ask, why Charles won't allow Destiny to come back. But from here, going back to Mystique, and just after her conversation with Charles, where she told him she'll go back to Dr. Gregor tomorrow, that Nimrod's not that far along, and it can wait. But right after this conversation with Charles, she goes back to a part of Krakoa called the Oracle, which is where we see a bit more of that personal flash flashback between her and Destiny watching the sunset, which is a point in time in the past where Destiny had warned Mystique about Krakoa, about Charles, and the possibility that he would refuse to bring her back. And at the time so long ago, Destiny's words came of those as a precognition. And Mystique hearing them at the time, she didn't know what they meant. But Destiny also let Mystique know that at this time when it came, that they would make a promise to her, but do everything in their power not to fulfill it. And mainly for the purpose of keeping Mystique blind. But Destiny urged Mystique to bring her back but if the leaders refuse to do so then burn that place to the ground and so for one as far as bringing destiny back we know that charles isn't having that but also in addition to this like before destiny had actually died she had also prophesied to mystique that after her death she would have a relationship with forge which did play out for a little bit throughout X Factor, but later on it really turned into one of those things to where he was more in love with her than she was with him. And I feel like that's one of those things that we're gonna see come back, if we haven't already, with Mystique using Forge to bring back Destiny, with Forge having access to Cerebro and the Shi'ar memory crystals, to where at this point he's likely responsible for building the location called the Oracle and placing Irene's consciousness within this place so that Mystique could have a part of her. But also, theoretically, if Mystique Mystique would have taken this crystal that she had got from Forge and placed that crystal inside of Nimrod instead of Dr. Gregor's husband, then who better to burn that place to the ground than Irene herself? But even to take it a step further with just the whole idea of Mystique manipulating Forge and just playing off the idea that he still has feelings for her then this could also potentially lead to us finding out that she had leaked Forge's research to Dr. Gregor, giving her knowledge of Shi'ar memory crystals and doing so as a form of a backup plan for Dr. Gregor to do for Mystique unknowingly in the event that Charles wouldn't keep his word. And with Mystique at this point being set to go back the next day, if she were to find a way to put Destiny's memories 
in Nimrod's body, then there's no question that Destiny would want Moira and the others to burn to the ground, which wouldn't be the first time for one of them, cause Moira would definitely be like, not again, I. <laughs> But that'll do it for this one, guys. But real quick, I just want to give a shout out to all the Patreons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here and wants more information on how to join the Patreon squad, I got a link down below. That'll take you to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that's it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Because Dr. Gregor, she wants her husband back. Mystique wants Destiny back. But Charles wants to keep Moira. And Forge likely still has feelings for Mystique. But I'm pretty sure only one out of these four is going to get what they want in the end but let me know your thoughts down below and we'll do it again in the next one all right later